More Heart Than Talent Radio. More Heart Than Talent Radio is brought to you today by my free digital coaching program. Are you seeking a coach to assist you to reach the next level of your life and business? Do you own a business and feel stuck not achieving your expectations? Are you already successful but just hit your lid? Today, you can discover the breakthrough experience with my free digital coaching program designed to shortcut the breakthrough process. In this four-part free training, you're going to learn principles and techniques seven-figure income earners use to manifest, create, and become abundant in any endeavor. To receive this free training, go to jeffreycombsdigitalcoaching.com to sign up now. Tuesday afternoon, more heart than talent video. Welcome to the More Heart Than Talent Facebook Live. Beautiful day in Northern California. Northern California is very interesting. Actually, Stockton, California is in Central California, but it's referred to as Northern California. So I am 70 miles straight east of the beautiful San Francisco Bay, not that far from beautiful Lake Tahoe. So here in my home office in the GMS studio, Golden Mastermind Studios, for more Heart Than Talent Facebook Live. Beautiful day, September 18th. If you're seeking a free one-on-one 20-minute coaching evaluation, feel free to inbox me on Facebook and I will return your inbox as soon as possible. I I have a great Facebook Live for you this afternoon. The topic of today's call is understanding and setting boundaries and creating a healthy boundary for you to operate in free enterprise. Now, this Facebook Live is every Tuesday at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. For years, and I do mean years, 20 years, this call was hosted at 7.30 Pacific, 10.30 Eastern Standard Time as a live mindset phone call. So all of those calls are archived, and you can find those on Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. So very exciting announcement. This is the new GMS pizza box. No, we're not sending out pizzas, but that is the equivalent of a pizza box. And in the GMS pizza box, voila, is the Breakthrough Factor Manual. This is a very comprehensive home study course that comes with the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program that I'm now hosting twice a month on Wednesdays at 4 o'clock Eastern. That is a subscription coaching service. And you can find out more about that. You, get your, you can get it. Actually, this is it's a free box. I want to do this again. So this is free. You can receive this free today. This is called Seven Steps to Seven Figures. This is a workbook that goes in the pizza box. You receive... Oh my God, the Anger Factor Workbook. This is cool. Hi, Joyce. So this is a workbook. This is a comprehensive workbook. This goes in the Jeffrey Combs Pizza Box. And then you'll also receive, this one is really cool, the Breakthroughs Factor Manual. Very, very comprehensive. Then you'll receive this, and we're sending these out free of charge, free. This is the box. You get three workbooks. I gotta make sure I'm understanding this. My assistant Chris Charles, that's free. All right. So how do they get? How do they receive this? You receive this by going to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle. Goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle. Chris, how long is this going on? We're gonna do this for a while. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and get put a lot of these out in circulation. So go ahead and go to that. Go to that website and order that box free, and it will be sent out to you tomorrow. Let's move into the inspirational portion of today's call. Now, this Saturday, I want to thank my good friend, exceptional collaborator and contributor, Diane Hughes Hunt, for hosting me in Saddlebrook, New Jersey. This will be an intimate event, more than likely 40, 50, 60 people. It's going to be a great event, and I'll be covering consciousness, esteem, how to elevate your esteem, how to separate your feelings from the events that shape them. All of my events are very, very, very deep, and I go into great content and context, cause and effect, why you do what you do, and how to separate your feelings from events. It's very common for my clients and my events to break down and cry. It's not a, it's not the crying towel event, but it, it is an event that's very emotional because I dig deep into why we do what we do. 
For those of you who've been my long-term client, you know the value of attending those events. So moving into the inspirational portion of today's call, I'm going to cover I'm going to cover just one other situation, and that is that once again that 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 my team was telling me to make sure to go to one more time to go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle. Now today's content for you today is we have the no boundaries equal low self esteem. So if you have codependent challenges, if you tend to over obligate, do more for others than you do for self. If you spend a great deal of time taking care of people, I wrote a post on this last night. If, you, if you're someone who swallows the family bullet and you put a lot of your energy into taking care of everyone, now even though some of that is noble, oftentimes it creates noble suffering. It creates noble struggling. And for you to be able to separate your feelings from the events, there's a term called a healthy boundary. Now, what is a boundary? I mean, it's, a boundary is is a line in the sand. It's a box. It's an emotional space that you create where you will no longer be the mind-body connection to the events where people take advantage of you, where you are guilted into doing situations that you don't really want to do. Now, if guilt is an emotion that drives your anxieties, there's a high probability that you will be neurochemically addicted to a set of be- feelings based on events that are unresolved. And if you are the first child in a family and you lose your innocence by having to really step up and be the grown-up of that family, well, that being the grown-up of the family, as you lose your innocence, it's very common to have that turn into an identity called codependence. Now, myself, my, I, I have codependent tendencies. Codependency was not my drug of choice. Alcohol and drugs were, specifically alcohol. But I also had a high tendency to over-obligate myself, do too much for significant others, enable people and do and take situations to an extreme that actually rob people of the opportunity to break through themselves so I could control the outcome. Now, if you are someone who, who identifies with this content, then you're in the right place at the right time. Now, what happens to many people is in the family structure, families have the opportunity to walk into each other's homes. They walk into the house, they move into the house, and there's a lot of guilt that goes on between certain family hierarchies in certain families and it's going to be your it's going to be your responsibility the ability to respond to understand what is a healthy boundary and what is unhealthy and it's going to be your responsibility to understand do you require a key to lock the door does someone require permission to walk into your house or do they just have free reign to come in and tell you what to do order you around boss you around and then violate you. Now, if that's the case, and then you let that happen, then you're operating out of guilt and resentment. Guilt is the front end of the anxiety, and resentment is the back end of the anxiety. But if you continue to say, yeah, but, yeah, but that's family, that's the neighbor, that's people down the street, those are the people I grew up with, now what you're doing is you're explaining, validating, justifying why you stay addicted to a set of emotions. If you are serious, not curious, if you are committed and not interested, then you will enter into a place of recovery. I want to congratulate one of my clients today who went to his first 12-step program after 18 years of being a noble struggler and a noble sufferer. And if, if, you, if, that, if you feel that that is you, well, today you can enter recovery. Rock bottom is a very overrated place for you to find yourself at so you can change. You can change any time that you are committed. When the pain is great enough is when you'll change. And you don't require rock bottom. You can be at rock middle where you are right there today. And you can be able to have a command of your emotions and say, I am. Now, instead of how do I, how I am is the state where you begin the process. I am in recovery. I am letting go of the feelings that shaped my anxiety. That is the affirmation. The action that follows is followed by commitment. And your objective is to be able to finish today without being critical of self. You can be honest with self. You can be aware of self. You can be in a place called metacognition where you observe self, but be be the person that's able to look at the situation without being critical of self or others. That means you start to elevate your consciousness. You separate yourself from anxiety and fear and doubt, and you you start to step into a place called esteem. Esteem is regard for self without any arrogance or any ego. And esteem really means love. As As you start to love self and love others, then you won't feel so controlled by the situation. Now, the process of recovery requires a term called honesty. And in the 12-step programs, typically the word rigorous is put in front of it. Me personally, I feel rigorous is a little too controlling, but 
honesty. Object honesty will really assist you to step out of denial. Now, in establishing a boundary, it means that you understand where you can draw the line so that you're not that you're not contradict you're not contradicting some of your morals, you're not giving away your power, you're not going to let people use guilt to control you, and you're able to easily and effortlessly let go. Now, if you've enabled someone, if you've over-obligated your someone, this is not difficult, it's new. This isn't hard, it's an experience. And the way you communicate with self will dictate the outcome that you create. But if you continue to use force so you can create your own counterforce or attract someone to be a counterforce, then the, cha- then the situation is going to be very difficult. And you're going to use the, hard o- the word hard over and over, and the word guess will show up frequently in your communication style. And when you're no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feelings, then be able to establish healthy boundaries will be an easy task. Now, if you're someone who loans people money and never receive it back, well, that's, that was a situation that you don't have a healthy boundary. If you chronically over-obligate yourself and say, yes, 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 but then ask yourself, why did I do this? If, you do, if that's the case, well, that's, that's a chronic case of not having a healthy boundary. If you say, I'd give this, my shirt off the back. Well, that, I've seen people say that. I'd give people the shirt off my back. All right, well, that's interesting. In There's nothing wrong with fanfare for the common man. If you're driving down the freeway or the highway, someone has a flat tire, you see someone stranded, that's a different situation. But if you just chronically over-obligate yourself, what you're doing is chronically overwhelming yourself. If you're over-obligated, there's a high probability that you're unorganized. If you're unorganized, you don't have a system, you don't have a method, you don't have a routine, and you're winging it. And if this is, is the case, then it's going to be challenged for you to master the moving parts of recovery, success, and business ownership. And as you begin to step into your power, you will separate your feelings from the events that shape them. Now, being able to establish boundaries breaks down to core values and being able to understand your value. The most valuable commodity that you possess is your ability to master your emotions. Because if you're a master of your emotions and you have command of your emotions, then you're not in control of being out of control and you'll have a different core value when it comes to time. Now, time comprises 86,400 seconds, 1,440 minutes, and one hour. When you value self, your time is valuable. When you devalue self, time has no value. And then you'll over-obligate yourself. You'll run from here to there to here to there to there to here, and you'll have any system or any routine to strategically be able to to accomplish tasks. When you're a multitasker, multi-skilled at multitasking, it means you can do less with more and then time becomes a valuable commodity. Now, I, I pride myself in being able to accomplish more in five minutes than some people can accomplish in five hours without comparing anyone. I just know this. I just know that I'm very skilled at multitasking and a very thorough, highly productive, detailed, organized man. When someone says to me I'm OCD, I just look at them and go, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna contest that because I don't want to prove anyone wrong. I will just let that go. I know by being organized, disciplined, and systematic that I have boundaries. And that healthy boundary is that I establish, I don't require anyone's permission to establish my boundaries. I don't have to ask someone if it's okay. Is it okay if I say no? Is it okay if I pass today? When you begin, when you begin to let go of people pleasing, when you begin to let go of codependence, when you begin to let go specifically this word worry, W-O-R-R-Y. When you're no longer a chronic worrier, when you're no longer worrying all the time, then you're, then you are you and you are free. Now in that space, that's when you begin to have a boundary. Yeah, but aren't you worried about what other people will think? No, I don't worry about that. And I'm, it's not that I don't care about what other people think, but I don't cast the doubt on what someone else is going to think. I, I focus on production, results, details, relaxation, rest, peace, empowering others. It's a very simple way to live. And the more complex you live, the more overwhelmed you would live. And when you live a very complex, no boundary situation, then people can walk in and out of your life. It means you don't have any any details. You don't have any emotional discipline. And to be able to have discipline, it means you become a disciple of the process. Discipline is not painful. Discipline is a word used 
to be able to be a master. And as you master your emotions, you'll have a much healthier probability of being able to establish boundaries, healthy boundaries. Now, in establishing a boundary, it's important that you're responsible for self. Now, when I say, when I suggest take care of self, take the word selfish out of the equation. Many people will say, but isn't that selfish? Now, if in, your, in this process of change, no, no, in this process of change, as you are no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape our feelings, as you're, as you're letting go of this process, you want to be able to understand this. A healthy boundary is established by me. And establishing it by me means I don't require anyone else's permission. So in being able to separate your feelings from the events, and you're no longer that mind-body connection to those events, then you are you and you are free. Now, as you, as you step into your power, and you are, you are the light, you are the source, you are consciously aware, now you're elevating yourself, you're less consumed, you're less worried about the outcome that has not happened, you're less overwhelmed about the details, you're more focused on the results, you're not worried about offending someone, you're not worried about hurting someone's feelings, you're not going to hurt someone's feelings unless you create the situation before it happens. And you're not going to make people angry. You don't have that ability. If they're angry, it's because they are angry. Now, when you're no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feelings, then you are you and you are free. Now, responsibility means ability to respond. And that means that you're able to, in your reflexes, you're able to adapt and adjust to the situation as it is. And when someone asks you a question and you feel overwhelmed, you're able to take a deep breath and you're able to respond. And if you know that you shouldn't do something, you trust your intuition and you trust your feelings and you're able to easily and effortlessly let go. And as you're able to be that man and be that woman who's able to separate their feelings from the events, now you start to ennoble yourself rather than able others. And ennoble, E-N-O-B-L-E. What does that mean? It means that you start to lift yourself consciously. And you're able to do this without worrying, without being, without being conflicted. And you don't feel selfish. One of the biggest situations that will require your attention is being able to let word of the get word guilt and selfish. Having self-esteem doesn't mean you're selfish. Many people contradict this. There's a big disparity between self-confidence and self-esteem. And as you're no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape your feelings, then you are you and you are free. Now, what does that freedom mean? That freedom means that you're free from, your, from the anxieties you hold on to. It means you're able to separate your feelings. And so you don't feel as guilty. The, the, the biggest deterrent to boundaries is guilt and shame. And as you let go of guilt, people that use guilt to control you, I can't believe you're going to move to another state. We'll never get to see the grandchildren. That's going to be so expensive to fly to see you. We'll never get to see you. Well, the, I mean, you're, you're not running away from anything. You're moving to where you want to move. You don't have to explain this to someone. This is about you and your life and about your ability to live where you want to live. And if someone wants to use guilt to control you, you have to ask yourself, how healthy is this relationship really? And as you start to evaluate some of your ability to relate, your relatability, some of the relationships you may have, you may have to separate yourself. You're not going to leave anyone behind. People are going to stay where they're going to stay. And as you start to move into communicating your standards clearly. So in, in establishing boundaries, it means you have standards and that you're able to hold yourself to the standards that you have. I don't give people 24-7 access to call me. I don't offer the shirt off my back. However, I will go, I will go to, to different links for different people depending on my relationship with them, how long we've been in business together, situations we've done. But I also can't compromise my own integrity. That means that you have standards, I have standards. Adhere to them. Hold to them. Be very clear on what your standards are. Establish a set of priorities. When you want to have a time frame, if you own a business, when you are done, you are done. And you don't feel guilty about that. Now, if you go to bed worried about everything you didn't do, then you can't possibly rest. If you're worried about the situations that that did or didn't happen, you can't possibly rest. That means your body's going to stay 
in a state of fight or flight. Because every midnight at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12 o'clock Central Standard Time, 12 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, 12 o'clock Pacific, Alaska, Hawaii, in America, in Canada, in Australia, you receive a new bank called time. 86,400 seconds. Every day, you have the opportunity to take that asset and be able to experience joy, love, bliss, reciprocity, prosperity. Or you also have the opportunity to experience anxiety, fear, and doubt. And in anxiety, fear, and doubt, typically, worry becomes way to the greatest deterrence to creating disappointment. Disappointment often comes from over-obligations, avoiding success, worrying about failing, other multitudes of anxieties that keep you doing the same thing over and over while expecting a different result. And as you begin to have a better understanding of why you do what you do, as you're able to separate your feelings from the events, as you're able to be an objective observer in why you do what you do, as you're able to understand predictability of why people do what they do, then you won't be surprised. You won't be shocked. You won't be in a state, I can't believe it. I don't understand. I don't know. And as you move into a no state, a K-N-O-W, well, then you're able to trust your intuition. You know when to say, I appreciate you asking me, but I'm going to pass on that. I recently had someone say, why do you live in Stockton? I said, because it's the city of my choice. Well, I can't believe you live in that city. Now, this is, once again, right here, this is a healthy boundary. There is nothing for me to prove. I don't really feel like validating and justifying why I moved to Stockton in 1987, why I live here. Here's a real question. Why is someone asking me this? And when someone's aggressive, it's beyond curiosity. They're putting you, they're putting me in a situation that we have to validate, justify, and explain myself. I have a boundary on that. I easily and effortlessly disarm that situation and move out of the equation. I'm no longer the mind-body connection to the events that created my unresolved anger. I'm no longer the mind-body connection to the events that created my state of worry. As you begin to use a series of words on letting go and practice the art of letting go, separating your feelings from events, Separating feelings is not a how do I state, it's an I am state. It's a state of being that you're being now as you're letting go. Letting go is not physical. Letting go is an emotional collapse where you're able to collapse the events that you once held on to consciously, unconsciously, subconsciously, or in a repressed state. As you begin to know, now it gives you the opportunity to be responsible. In this state of emotion, in this state of of awareness, you can now establish a set of boundaries that are healthy. You can have boundaries without any guilt. You can have boundaries where you're cl- where you're clearly defined about who I am, what I'm capable of. And if you just keep piling on top and on top and on top and on top of, of situations, well, the bow is going to break at some point. But as, you, as you begin to separate your feelings from events and move into your power, then you're going to be the, the power that people are are looking for. That power is not force. That power is emotional. And that power that you're seeking to create is esteem. This is a non-physical power. This is an emotional, etheric energy. It's a tractor factor energy that when you walk in a room, people begin to feel you. Not from a level of arrogance, not because you're attractive, not because you're shiny, because you're love. And it's that love that exudes that people really begin to feel. And in that type of love, you're able to easily and effortlessly pass on situations that are not going to be favorable. Not only that, but in that state of consciousness, seldom or ever will people ask you to do what you're not willing to do because there's an unconscious message that says, I'm not that person anymore. I'm not the chronic over obligator. I'm not delta, delta, delta. I'm not here to help you, help you, help you. I am the empowerment coach. I'm a man or woman of influence or affluence, and I'm here to assist you to the finish line, provided you are committed. And as you start to understand the law of the few, very few people are committed, so you are able to easily and effortlessly effortlessly let people go without, without having to feel guilty or feel overwhelmed, because you're practicing a term called detachment. Detachment doesn't mean you don't care. Detachment means that you understand. And you understand by continuing to over-obligate yourself and continue to do the same situation over and over that that what you're doing is you're creating codependence. 
Codependence chronically leads to resentment. It leads to worry. It leads to being worried about the outcome that hasn't happened. And as you're able to step into that state called now that you know, you now know, then you won't feel the same tendencies to do more for others than you would do for self. Now, let's look at that. Do more for others than do for self. So that's not a black and white situation. That means you can still be fanfare for the common man. It means you can really be there for certain people. But if you're worried about the outcome, if you feel that you have to fix people, that your team can't operate without you, then you're creating codependence, not independence. And then you're creating a non-duplicatable process that's going to be very challenging for your team to create any reciprocity or any results. And you'll have a lot of pretty little pets that you'll feel responsible for. And as you're able to separate your feelings from the events that shape them, now you're able to move into a place called awareness. And it's that awareness that allows you to be in a state of consciousness where you're able to understand what's happening in your surrounding. You're able to, through intuition, extrasensory perception, in a place called no, understand. Your memory is enhanced. Your ability to see the situation before it happens. The clarity, your vision, all this starts to become in place. This is a state called consciousness. And in this elevated state, you're so aware that you no longer relapse. You're not trying to control an outcome that hasn't happened. You're not worried about talking to your mother on the weekend. You're not concerned what's going to happen when you go into the function so you don't walk right to the food table. If you're already, if you're worried about going to the food table, you don't have a healthy boundary. As you begin to let go and separate your feelings from events, then you're not the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feelings. So when you set and follow through on consequences, your actions speak volume. So when you set health, healthy boundaries, your actions start to be the consequences of your commitment. And that action starts to create a different kind of centrifugal movement. It becomes the undertow to a business. It becomes the energy that creates the attractor factor. It becomes the feelings that people feel as you walk into a room, walk onto a stage, walk into a restaurant, walk into a grocery store. People autonomically, automatically want to connect with you. Saturday night, I had the privilege of dining in St. Louis, Missouri. I dined at one of the most, one of the most exceptional restaurants I've ever dined at a restaurant called Tony's. An exceptional man, handsome man, in a suit came up to me and introduced himself, and he asked me how my experience was. I asked him if he was a maitre d'. He informed me he was the owner. I happened to know who his name was, and I informed him that I knew someone who knew him, and we were in the middle of a very, 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 very interesting conversation. He volunteered to make a dessert for me called Zableone. Zableone is a very, very exceptional Italian-French dessert that's made in a double broiler and it's whisked over strawberries or raspberries. It takes about 10 minutes to make the dessert table side. And it's an absolute presentation. And when I got up to leave, the owner picked up my check. Now, I don't go into restaurants expecting to pick up checks, but I go into restaurants expecting to have an exceptional experience. And it just so happened that the energy that was created around that created that kind of reciprocity. And as I'm leaving, I'm also passing some money back to the staff who serve me. So that creates in universal law the, how money moves. And in that type of situation, that will happen to you frequently as you start to have boundaries and you start to establish who you are and who I am as you're no longer the emotional, overwhelmed person that kept you doing the same thing over and over. So when you start to honor self, now honoring self means that you you have a, a code that you live by. It's a very relaxed code. It means you're ethical, you're honest, you have integrity, you follow through on your words. You, when you commit, you don't, you don't under promise. When you don't over promise and under deliver, and you don't, you don't do the opposite. It means you're you and you're free. Your word is law and you're able to follow through on what you say you're going to do and you become very skilled at this process. And as you really step into this place called recovery, you start to put back-to-back -back days of emotional recovery together, you start to elevate your consciousness. You start to move from anxiety up to a little higher consciousness to a place called doubt. You start to understand that doubt's the space between fear and faith. And you take that next step, 
all of a sudden you've crossed the conscious line and you start to elevate your feelings and you start to feel a lot better about self and those feelings about self begins to exude and other people begin to feel them and they go, well, I don't know what it is you're doing, but it, I want to be a part of that. Well, as, as that happens, that means that people are starting to feel your feelings. That means that your consciousness, your emotional vibrations begin to change and you're in a place called esteem, a place called power. And you don't set a healthy boundary because you are the boundary. You don't have to write down your goals and plans because you're able to see them and produce in them. And writing down goals is important. Having a dream board, a vision board, all those are really good. But what's equally as good is being able to just tip back in your chair, being able to take a deep breath and go into a very relaxed state called peace and be able to have a, a relaxed focus about the outcome that's about to happen. And when you know, when you K-N-O-W, then you don't D-O-U-B-T. And when you don't doubt, you're not the space between fear and faith. You're not going from consciousness to doubt and back and forth. You're grounded and versed in a place called awareness. And in that awareness, you have, you have boundaries because you, you, you are healthy in your communication style. And you're not holding on to a series of events that no longer serve you or ser serve anyone else in your circle of influence. If you're focusing on being great at service, it's also important to learn how to serve self without feeling guilty. And as you begin to read books, that's, that's serving yourself. As you begin to exercise, that's taking care of self. As you begin to have, make healthier choices when it comes to your consumption, that's self. When you begin to take care of self, now you can give others input about how they can improve their esteem, their self-esteem. And that's not being selfish, that's being aware. And it's that kind of consciousness is what creates a culture. That's what changes protocol. That's what changes forum. That's what creates meaning, cause, and purpose. When you're able to deliver from that type of energy, then people feel you, baby. They want to be a part of who you are and what you're doing. And that's all unconscious marketing. That doesn't cost you any money. That doesn't cost you any time because that's a different kind of time and a different kind of prosperity, that is value. And as you begin to value self and value others, then you, what you're actually doing is you're raising the value ladder. And you don't ever have to raise your rates because you raise your value. And my name is Jeffrey Combs, president and founder of Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. And as you begin to elevate and raise your self-esteem, your attractor factor is enhanced and people want to be around you, join you, find out more about you, follow you, Join your cultures, join your teams. Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. See you this Saturday in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, and at other events around the United States in the remaining year 2018. Now, if you just rang, if you just came on this call at the very end here, I want to let you know that my team has put together three workbooks that you can actually not purchase, but you can request for free. The Breakthrough Factor Manual. Seven Steps to Seven Figures, and the Anger Factor Workbook. Three books that will be coming in a the GMX, GMS pizza box. It will ship out the day after you request them. And you can request them by going to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle. Jeffrey Combs, you have a great day. Thank you for listening to the More Heart Than Talent Radio. If you enjoyed today's content and would like more insight on how to release emotional overwhelm and procrastination tendencies, then take advantage of my free Procrastination Cure Book giveaway. If you are committed to letting go of your procrastination tendencies, begin the process of changing your identity now so you can finally go from procrastination to producer. To receive your free copy now, go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash pro.